Amen. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, I'm not going to preach. Uh, I know that's... Uh, I Truly, I'm just going to share a thought with you. So, take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 5. 1 Peter, chapter number 5. And um, I was thinking of a passage to kind of encapsulate uh, what what happened in all in their life, but also I think in my life. And as you're turning there, I'll give you a testimony for myself. One of the things the Lord worked on me is, and I th- I was thinking in a military term, and I do that sometimes. But when it comes for burden for souls, it seemed in my heart like the Lord said to me. But you don't mind being a sniper. A sniper. Somebody points out a target and you go get it. Somebody is ready and you go get them. He said, you don't mind being a sniper. But what if I wanted you to be part of the infantry? The infantry just charges. I have no idea what they're going into. You know, and, uh, and he convicted me. He said, listen, I, I'm, I put you in a place where I want you to be a sniper. But don't forget that you're still supposed to be part of the infantry. And so the Lord convicted me about that to not sit back and wait. You know, because people will come to me for help and people will come to me. And, and in fact, my life is very busy with people coming to me for help. And so you can sit back and say, look at all that the Lord has allowed me to do. And the Lord says, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. But I also need you to charge. And go out and find more, not just, not just sniping. You need to go out and find more. And uh, so that was, the Lord convicted me on that area. That There's a phrase in the Bible that talks about that the men, they rested on their lees. And it's basically, it's kind of like the old idea. They rested on, we're, we're okay, we're doing this. And the Lord convicted me and said, don't get content with what you're doing so that you stop moving forward. And so that was kind of my testimony the Lord used in my heart. And I was amazed to see the transformation that God did in the lives of young people just in their willingness to hear God. Just in their willingness uh, to hear God. And the other thing I learn from it is I always ask this question because I'm a preacher. Why is preaching seem to be really effective at camp? And it could be one of two reasons. It could be caliber of preacher. It could be um, purely environment. But I really think what it is ultimately is the expectation to hear. You go to camp with the expectation to hear. And I thought to myself, and I could, I could be the first one to make the mistake of coming to church without the expectation to hear. And that's something I think in our families that we need to cultivate, that we come to church with the expectation to hear. Amen. So after every day of services at camp, we had this expected question. So what did you hear from the Lord today? What did you hear from the Lord today? Because there's that expectation to hear. But then we come to church and we go home and nobody ever asks the question, what did you hear from the Lord today? Because there's not that expectation to hear. And that's something that I think, at least for myself, should be done on a family level. And sometimes I'm guilty of not asking my kids what they got from the message. Because I'm like, I preach the message and, oh, you know, But I still want them to hear from God too. So what qualifies an expectation to hear is an environment to share. And I would encourage you to find somebody, preferably, I mean, obviously, most beneficially within your family, and build that environment of expectation to hear. What did you hear from the message today? What did the Lord speak in your heart today? And um, because the Lord is speaking when his word is spoken. And so that was what the Lord used in my heart. But let me just read these verses. 1 Peter chapter 5, and we read verse 8 a lot. We think about verse 8 a lot. It says, be sober, be vigilant, (coughs) 
<coughs> because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. We read that verse a lot, and we think, be sober, be vigilant, be sober, be vigilant. But within the context of this chapter, there are some necessary things in order for us to be in a place to be sober and vigilant. And I kind of watched this happen in the lives of young people to where they were finally at the place that their eyes and hearts were up and open and ready to be sober, to be vigilant. And God began to do a work in their life. And this is the sequence. And so we'll go back to verse number five. And I just want to show you these things. Verse five, likewise, ye youngers, some, you younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Okay, the first thing that is evident before a person can be ready, be sober, there has to be a spirit of humility. Okay, and this is a volitional spirit of humility. Ye younger, submit. It is volitional humility. Okay? Volitional humility is different than I may as well be humble because I'm a fairly miserable person. I have nothing to be proud about, so I may as well be humble. Okay? Uh, that's, that's, not, that's not volitional humility. Volitional humility is I choose to subjugate myself to the authority God has placed in my life and the authority of God in His Word. And so that's the first one is that Choosing of humility. And then verse, verse 7 is a consequence of that humility. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Okay, we heard some of those testimonies. I realized that all I was thinking about was myself. So what do I do? I give it all to God. Amen. Okay, and that's what happened. When there's a recognition that the over-elevation of self is going to bring about detriment in my life, and there's volitional humility where I say, no, I choose to bring myself to be in subject under God. The natural, from that squeezing of humility, is to cast out all our cares upon Him, and to love Him, and take, and as several of the young people said, it, there's really nothing in my life more important than being willing to serve God, being willing to honor God, which means they have to be casting, casting, and to be honest, they will be continuing casting, and we're still casting all our cares upon him because life seems to pile up cares. And as life piles up cares, I start with humility, and humility puts me in a place of subjection that I can cast my cares upon the Lord. Then it says, I can be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, singing whom he may devour. If all, <laughs> if all my cares are gone then that which distracted my soberness and my vigilance has now been removed from me, and I do not have those distractions that I can look up and be aware of the tactics of the devil in my life. So humility produces casting, and then I'm less distracted with me, and I'm able to see the activity and movement of the enemy. And that's made evident in verse number 9. Who resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. This is not just a one-person thing. This is available. He is after everybody, but their resistance is available for those that are in Christ, the brethren. Verse 10, but the God of all grace who hath called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle. And so this sequence here, I'm humble before God, I cast my burdens on Him, <clears throat> He makes me aware of the activity of the brethren, and all, I'm sorry, the activity of the devil, the suffering of the brethren, and now my life is in proper perspective to where even my own suffering is going to produce something beneficial. That God is going to do something in my life. And he's going to do these things. It says that the suffering for a while make you perfect, established, strengthened, settled. If you were to ask Christians if they'd love to be perfect, established, strengthened, and settled, they'd say, yes. How do I do that? Start with humility. 
Humility elevates the importance of God and diminishes the importance of you. So you, all your stuff, and all your cares become less important. You cast them. When you become less distracted because you have relieved yourselves of the burden of whether it be appetites or bitterness, you relieve yourself casting it upon the Lord, giving it to Him. Your eyes are open to see the activity of the enemy. And you're aware. And seeing the activity of the enemy, you also see the activity of the enemy attacking your brethren. And you become empathetic to them. And you see what they're going through. And your heart goes out to them. And seeing their perspective, it puts your own suffering in proper perspective. Seeing what God is ultimately doing in your life. And this is what he accomplishes. He makes you perfect, established, and settled. And guess who gets the glory? Look at the next verse. To him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. And this is the sequence that I saw at camp. I saw this sequence in the life of young people. And I've seen it before. Praise the Lord. One of the things that, that, that is seemingly a negative about camp is somebody will say, well, young people, they made a decision. But six weeks, eight weeks, or 32 weeks from now, they're no longer doing it. Well, I'll tell you why. They stopped being humble. And stop being humble, they heap to themselves their own cares and burdens. As they heap to themselves all their cares and burdens, they're not able to be sober and vigilant and aware of the activity of the devil. And they're being knocked down, and so they're going into hiding, and they're trying to survive. And in being hunkered down position, they can't see the affliction and suffering of the brethren. They have no empathy, and all they can think about is the difficulty of their own suffering. And so instead of God using it to make them perfect, they flee back to selfishness. And it's not just young people. It's any people. And so the message is this is not a one-time sequence. And God sometimes will use some preaching, whether it's a week at camp or whether it's a revival service or whether it's a particular message or whether it's just a devotion in the morning yourself that will confront you and bring you to a place of humility. Amen. And then you need to have the act of faith to cast your cares Amen. and be sober, be empathetic, be aware, then have perspective. And then God will do the work. To him be the glory. To him be the glory. That's what Sam was talking about. I think we overthink it. So Adam said, well, I think we overthink it. Well, what am I supposed to do? Be humble before God. Well, what about all this stuff? Go ahead and give it to him. Well, how am I going to handle life? Well, now life you'll be able to be aware of the activity of the devil a lot better now. Your head will be up thinking of others instead of thinking of yourself, and you'll be empathetic. And then you'll be able to be aware that even your own suffering is doing a work in your life. It's temporary because he is eternal. And you'll be able to be established. It says you'll be able to be perfect, established, strengthened, settled. Man, that's the kind of security the believer should have in Christ. It's available, but it starts with that sense of humility, being willing to be humble. Well, how do I learn to be humble before God? Start by being humble with the authorities that God has placed in your life. That's where you start. Start by being humble to the authorities that God has placed in your life. Because I'd like to be settled. Wouldn't you like to be settled? I'd like to be strengthened. I'd like to be established. I'd like to be made perfect. And with Spencer, I mean, Spencer, you and I are the same. I, I, I like the end before the process. Okay, I want all that stuff. Go ahead and give it to me, God. Because, like, I deserve it, right? No. Get humble. And you could hear it in the testimonies. God broke them down. And then God built them up. But it's something, in order for that fire that several of them talked about, a passion for souls, did you notice when they dealt with their sin, they cast their burdens on the Lord, their eyes looked up, they saw the dangers of the world, and then they saw the lost and dying souls. So why don't we see lost and dying souls? Well, probably we haven't started with humility, or we keep holding on to all our cares. 
And so how do we continue that? How do we keep that going in their life? How do I keep it going in my life? I must subjugate myself to the authorities that God has placed in my life and God himself under the mighty hand of the Lord and his word. Amen. I must submit to him Amen. daily, daily, volitionally Amen. humble, actively casting, makes me aware, empathetic, and have proper perspective, and I'm in a position where God continue his work in my life. And that's the desire we want to see in our young people. They're at a place in life where it's so raw because their life is so quickly changing. And some of us, we're established and we're settled, but it's not for God. It's in our own way. I've been doing it like this for so long. There's no way I could change. Well, it sounds like you need to get humble. <laughs> it's too late for me. It sounds like you need to get humble. I got too many cares. Sounds like you need to get humble. And cast them over to the Lord. I've done it. Praise the Lord. Me too. Do it again. Amen. Because every time I cast the cares to the Lord, it seems like sometimes I just gather them back up, take them with me. And Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And thank the Lord for what the Lord did in the life of these young people, but I pray that the Lord would help us to see that example and crave that activity in our life. And it starts with humility in 1 Peter chapter 5. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help us.